Well, uh, we will go up to uh, consent agenda with the addition of items 34 and 38 uh, a little later. The first comes turn to the public comment period. And uh, the first, uh, uh, one minute each, please. Uh, the first speaker is Pat Sorensen, followed by Mavis O'Donoghue and then Pat Jordan and Louis McCurry. Louis McCurry. So Pat Sorensen, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. I represent 101 residences of a senior housing complex in Marin County. I am here again to plead for complete restraint on the part of PG&E of installation of smart meters. In May of 2012, the majority of us collectively agreed to opt out with written notices to PG&E to keep our analog meters. Why did we choose this route and assume what we feel is grievously imposed illegal fees? I will use myself as an example. Being a two-time cancer survivor, my apartment and those around me in our three-story complex lies 12 feet between two banks of 89 meters, gas on one side and electric on the other. We have five such clusters in our complex. Do I need more radiation? Do my elderly neighbors? I implore you to take into consideration the additional impact multiple meters clustered together across scores of apartments throughout California can have potentially on human health. Let science determine the impact of radiation from smart meters before any further installations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mavis and Donovan, we follow by Pat Jordan, Louise McTurnan, and Damon Ferris. Good morning, Commissioners, and welcome, Commission, Commissioner Peterman. This is my second appearance before this council regarding the installation of PG&E smart meters. At 93 years of age, I find it ridiculous that we have to pay for the neglect caused by PG&E, plus too many unknown facts regarding the safety of the smart meters. I thought the California PUC was to protect the citizens. My senior complex in Marin County needs community wipe up out with no fee. Thank you. Thank you. Pat Jordan. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak out um, this morning. Um, I'm also against the smart meters installation. I, work, I live in a residential com um, senior complex of 65 units. Uh, they were installed without any notice to any of the tenants. They were put in, and that was it. Uh, pg and &E was allowed in the building to do this without any, without any questions asked or explanations to the tenants. Many of the tenants, being older, they have uh, health problems. They did not know the radiation. They did not, when they knew the opt-out uh, program, uh, they didn't have the money for the fees. Uh, we feel it's very unfair that there was not more knowledge given of the radiation. Uh, uh, smart meters have not even had any um, tests done through WHO, which is the World Health Organization. They are not for smart meters. Uh, we ask that there be an alternative and not have these um, radiation devices in our buildings or any buildings uh, at any, anymore. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, Louise McTurney. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please listen carefully today. People's lives, including mine, are at stake. Where are we as a society if we cannot accommodate our disabled? We willingly accommodate those with visual, hearing, or mobility impairments. We do not tax the individual for the expense of wheelchair ramps. You are taxing the electromagnetically sensitive with the opt-out fee. To even have a fee is discrimination. To consider raising it is just corrupt. Smart meters were never made mandatory by federal or state law, but PG&E forced them on us anyway. 
They infiltrated our private websites and top PG&E officers spied on us. They discarded our analog meters and now want to charge us for giving them back. All in all, PG&E has acted unconscionably. Rather than profiting, they should be fined for the repeated fraudulent stances, unethical and illegal behaviors. We need no fee opt-outs for individuals, businesses, and communities, and medical smart free, uh, smart meter free zones for people with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you. Janine Ferris, to be called by Jason Winnett and Brian Lasanti. Good morning, Commissioners, and welcome, Commissioner Peterman. I'm also here to talk about smart meters. Um, early in 2011, I began to experience severe headaches. I also started having ringing in my ears that was so loud it affected my hearing. I began visiting healthcare practitioners who attempted to treat my symptoms. Finally, one of them asked me if I had a smart meter on my home. I was living at the Cove Apartments in Tiburon at the time, and I discovered that smart meters were installed throughout the complex early in 2011. The ones for my building were near my bedroom. I was told by the Cove management that there was nothing I could do about the smart meters. They claimed that the meters were installed without their permission. I began looking for another place to live. <coughs> I now live in senior apartments in San Rafael where there are no smart meters. My symptoms have dramatically improved. It is vitally important to me and to others in the community that we remain smart meter free. I believe that we should be able to opt out as a whole community without any cost. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jason Winnett. We call by Barbara Lasanti and then Nancy Benson. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Thanks for coming in. And I, too, have uh, great concerns about both the smart meters themselves as a health <coughs> issue and an environmental issue, as well as concerns about how PG has uh, brought these forward. The first I knew anything about smart meters was, was when Wellington Energy was poking around in my yard in Berkeley and trying to install one. And I didn't know much, I didn't know anything at the time, but it seemed to me, how as a homeowner, that that was the first I would hear anything about it when an uninvited party was in my yard. Secondly, I don't think it's particularly convincing to most people in this room that pg e has the public health in a high priority. I would notice this sign behind you, Commissioner, the Public Utilities Commission. How is it that a private organization for profit is able to do what it does without more regulation? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Barbara Lusanti, and then Nancy Bennett, and then Bob Geary. Good morning. I am Barbara Lasanti, Professor of Mathematics and Computer Science at Mills College for 32 years. In August 2011, I stood here and asked you, will the smart meters just be communicating with each other about nothing other than that they exist? I did not realize just how close I was to reality. The following statistic appeared in a document prepared by PG&E in response to an order by ALJ Amy Yip Kukagawa. 9,981 is the average number of daily transmissions of an electric smart meter. Of those 9,981, only six are data transmissions about electric usage. What does that mean? That means that only six one hundredths of one percent of the transmissions have anything to do with energy data. If you are unlucky enough to be in the 99.9 percentile, PG&E says one meter in every 1,000 transmits 190,396 times daily. Still, only six of those transmissions have anything to do with energy data usage. That is three one thousandths of one percent. Give up the goal 
that the stated goal that the, pur the purpose of the mesh network of smart meters is energy conservation. It's not true. The purpose of that mesh network is controlled by the utilities so that more revenue can be generated. This is not about energy conservation. This is about making money. Okay, Nancy Burnett, then Bob Geary, and Jenny Lee. Commissioners, and welcome you, Commissioner. I have a suggestion. Uh, since you've been asked for over two years now to stop installing these really harmful devices, 57 cities and counties in California alone have passed moratoriums. And yet, the place that you continue, the only action that you've taken is to um, charge opt-outers a nasty fee. Um, so until this is resolved, why not do this? Allow only one pulse per day, <laughs> rather than up to 900,000 daily, or better yet, one pulse per month. That's all you really need to read it. There's really no doubt at all. Scientific evidence is 100% that these pulsations are causing terrible damage to all biota. But of course, we're the only ones that can talk. So do something really smart and cut the radio frequency transmissions to one a month or at least one a day. Thanks. Thank you. Bob Geary. Honorable members, you are required by your oath of office to support and defend the U.S. Constitution. It's the same oath I took before becoming a San Francisco police officer and serving as a commissioned officer in the United States Army Military Police. In each instance, when a warrant was required in the performance of my duties, I had to have a compelling reason for requesting a warrant than adhering to the strict guidelines stated in that warrant. Accordingly, I refuse to allow a smart meter in my house because they violate my rights guaranteed in the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, the right to privacy. Smart meters would monitor the activity of my house without a required warrant. My, by allowing PG&E and gas electric companies to charge off our fees, you are unlawfully licensing the, the, bill, the utility to ignore the Bill of Rights. Um, in 1964, the 24th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified outlawing a poll tax. The Fourth Amendment outlaws opt-out fees the same way. The Ninth Amendment uh, makes those uh, sound. So I suggest that you look at the 64th of the uh, 24th Amendment to the United States uh, Constitution regarding opt-out fees. You uh, check out with the Fourth Amendment rights. You reread your oath of office, and you take a look at the Ninth Amendment. Thank, Thank you for your time. Gentlemen. Thank you. Jenny Lee. Supposed to be brought by Zedia. Good morning. My name is Jenny Lee. Welcome to the Commission, Peter. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with with you on this most important issue. I represent a community of elders in a low-income senior housing complex in Marin. There are 18 electric and smart and uh, gas meters in our complex. They are located on the other side of our bedroom walls. Because of the potential health risks posed by smart meters, which we now know are very real, we voiced our objections to the smart meters directly to PG&E in 2010. Since then, we have come together to speak with one voice as a community. 100% of our re uh, residents have opted out to smart meters in spite of the ongoing hardships of paying these opt-out fees. These fees are burdensome to us, some of whom cannot even afford to pay for our medications. No community or person should have to pay to keep an analog meter, if they so choose, for the purpose of protecting their health. As a community, we ask the, P the CPUC to end these punitive fees and the fees 
we have already paid be refunded to us. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Is that it? <coughs> Carol Page, Vicki Sievers, and Nancy O'Connor. Pardon? Go ahead. Good morning. I'm here again to show you the impact the smart meter has on our civilization and why community opt-out is what is needed at this time or sooner. One year ago, the smart meter was removed from my home. I have suffered health effects that have mainly subsided since then, but I still get nosebleeds walking through congested neighborhoods. It's very unpleasant having blood pouring out of my nose, knowing the cause to be these weapons of mass destruction. If this degradation of humanity continues, then our civilization is suppressed in the state of slavery by corporate conglomerate who are determined to rule the world at the expense of destroying it. You cannot justify this agenda to continue without the blood of our civilization on your hands. Take responsibility, CPUC. Ban these smart meters. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Page, to be followed by the receivers. Welcome, Commissioner. Uh, please understand, it is not disinterest that causes us to leave after we speak. It is the fact that the electromagnetic fields here make us ill. For one minute at this microphone, I will be suffering effects all day long. I listen to meetings at home. Meanwhile, this chamber is packed with representatives of industries that you regulate. Some are here at our time. The system is that some have access and some are disenfranchised. Utilities divert funds, destroy evidence, buy shills to impugn studies protective of the public health. Then people die. Chromium-6 and San Bruno are examples. You should be mitigators, not enablers. But a biased, complicit chairman has created a culture of contempt in an agency where profits always win. Congress voted smart meters to be optional. Individuals, businesses, communities must be allowed to escape the secondhand smoke of a flawed smart meter program. Fiscal force on an unwilling public is coercion, and it guarantees continued escalating confrontation. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. We follow by Nancy O'Connor. Welcome, Commissioner Peterman. I come with a brief story from this utility customer, Beth Sherrick of Marin, who wishes to be heard here, but because of health damage from smart meters, cannot tolerate the Wi-Fi in this auditorium. Beth says, I started my own small business in 2003 and married in 2011. I had a healthy, productive life that included use of Wi-Fi, cell phones, and computers. But in 2010, smart meters were installed in my building without my knowledge. I have lived there comfortably for nine years. I grew very ill from these meters, insomnia, drop in blood pressure, heart palpitations, headaches, ringing in the ears, stomach problems, weight loss. We were forced to move, relocating in Fairfax where there are few smart meters. But my health was already so compromised and my symptoms worsened with exposure to a cell tower hidden on the hill above. I cannot sleep without medication. I am extremely fatigued. My liver and endocrine systems are affected. I closed my profitable, my profitable business because of smart meters on my office building. Once a very social person, I now spend my days alone. I cannot travel or see friends or family. I cannot go to a restaurant or a movie or watch TV. I can barely be home long enough to read a little each day. I spend my days seeking medical consultation or driving or hiking, looking for the last few spots of Marin away from RF radiation. My marriage, my husband of a few years, um, is despondent and my marriage is in peril. He can barely watch me suffer. If I lose my husband and his income, the life I knew will be over. He is all I have left of a once fulfilling life. Thank you. Nancy Okada and Lisa Moscow and Dee Burroughs. Good morning. Thank you for letting me speak and welcome to Ms. Peterman. 
and I hope that you will consider my comments. I want to really thank you for allowing me to keep my analog meter. And we also have a small rental unit, which we also have an analog meter on that. It really does make a difference in a small suburban neighborhood where we have a lot of trees and everything, but everybody around me has smart meters, and the white noise is pretty incredible. Um, but it's important for the citizens to have a choice, and I want to stress to you the importance of allowing us to keep that choice, and also it seems to me that it would make more sense to also not charge us for it. And so please let us keep the individual and community rights to keep our analog meters at no cost. Please allow us to keep residential and business opt-outs. Please allow us to keep safe zones around homes for those suffering from electro-sensitivity. Please allow us to keep full open investigations and hearing into health, privacy, and fire risk from smart meters. And please recall the hazardous meter systems as well as those that are overcharging people. Thank you very much for your listening to my comments. Thank you. Okay, Lisa Rosco. Yeah, you know, I'd like to first address the issue of a discouragement to speak. Uh, the rules out there say we have three minutes, and we continually get one minute. And um, <laughs> we're dealing with these issues, health issues, property issues, financial issues, important things day in, day out, 24-7. We should have three minutes to talk about this. Absolutely. The other thing is that the last time I came to this meeting, I had to go through the TSA machine. They didn't do a pat-down. That was going to be one of my objections. They did a pat-down today. Thank you. Um, a lot of people do not come to these meetings because they're very sensitive to, uh, and they're very sick. So uh, those of us who come are representing thousands of people. 57 counties have, have requested that in California that we don't have uh, uh, smart meters. And I also would like to say that it's a lot cheaper to start, stop it before things get really bad. I tried to stop nuclear power in the 70s, and they said, oh, the biggest problem you know, we have is the uh, waste. And the, and the industry said, oh, we'll have the waste taken care of by then. You, we know what's happened with that with Hanford. Two billion, four billion, six billion dollars. We should not have to pay an opt-out fee. And the other thing is that it took me three months to get an opt-out. I phoned again and again and again. PG&E kept telling me, oh, well, we, we changed your meter. Well, they changed my meter from one type of smart meter to another type of smart meter that was less damaging. It still is a smart meter, and it took the electrician coming to my house and pulling off the label, which was hiding the word smart meter underneath it. I don't think we, we deserve to be treated like this way. Thank you. <laughs> D. Burris. We followed by Earl B. and then David Witchens. Good morning. My big concern is my right to privacy and my security. And Americans are guaranteed the right to privacy by the Fourth Amendment. I didn't give you permission to put the smart meter on my house. And I shouldn't have to pay to get my old one back. And I shouldn't have to pay a monthly fee. You crossed my property line and you did something I didn't want you to do. Good morning. Smart meters are not safe and they're not healthy. It's wrong to charge anybody, any group, any community opt-out fees. There should not be opt-out fees at all or charges of any kind to have analog meters on your home. Um, I've been a rate payer probably like most folks in the room for decades, three, four decades. I've been a pg e rate payer and I'll continue to be so in the future. But these opt-out fees are absolutely wrong. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes, I believe. Uh, Michael Turnipseed and then Mary Beth Bragg. Good morning, Chairman PV, Commissioners. It's nice to meet you again. 
going to change the topic a little bit. I'm Michael Turnipsey from the Kern County Taxpayers Association. I provided each of you a written copy of my comments because I couldn't stay within the two or three minutes. I've traveled from Bakersfield today to discuss a critical issue, the need of the Tehachapi Renewable Transmission Project to be, clean, be completed on time and under budget. It is important it's completed for the economy of Kern County. Some basic facts, the RPS is requiring 33% of electric, electric production in California to be renewable by 2020. Kern County has set a goal of 10,000 megawatts of renewable energy by 2015. This is $25 billion worth of investment in our county. Currently, we have permitted and are working on 7,200 megawatts. Uh, that's eight times more than any other county in the state. Eastern County is a very remote area. TRCP is critical for moving 4,500 megawatts of electricity to consumers from this rural area. It must be completed on time so, production, so producers can honor their contracts and meet the state's new RSP renewable system. Uh, this isn't a current county issue. It's a statewide issue with the unintended consequences of this project not being undone. Uh, economic havoc for Eastern Kern County and the inability to meet the RSP. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mary Beth Bragdon and then Freddie Romero. Good morning. I want to talk about another unintended consequence. Um, special hello to you, Ms. Beeman. Um, Joseph Tainer wrote a seminal paper titled Collapse of Complex Civilizations, showing how over-complexification inevitably leads to destruction. Currently, Southern California Edison is pushing to restart San Onofre, nuclear reactor number two, at 70% power without fixing it. The CQC has directed all California utilities to make the so-called smart meters the new norm. This could be a deadly combination. Wireless electronics are vastly more vulnerable to many threats than the old analog meters, including vulnerability to power surges, as happened in East Palo Alto, um, hacking and cyber attacks, not to mention the health effects. These vulnerabilities could cause a, loss, cause a loss of crucial electricity from the grid that's needed to cool both the nuclear reactor core and the nuclear irradiated fuel in the pools. Uh, to prevent the meltdowns. They require off-site electricity to cool them. That's why so many Californians say, recall the defective smart meters and absolutely do not allow the San Onofre nuclear reactor to restart. Thanks. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Freddie Romero, and um, I represent the San Jose Band and Chumash Indians Elders Council. And I'm here to speak this morning about the application for the Channel Island Telecom project. Uh, <clears throat> the Elders Council, as well as many other tribes within the Central Coast area, do oppose this. Uh, one of the reasons being is that the Channel Islands have, for many years, been the home of the Chumash people. Uh, that has been proven archaeologically and anthropologically. <clears throat> We've had we have lived there for over 10,000 years. And today, you know, you're here to uh, approve a permit, which we also have an issue with, too, as a state agency and as a recommendation by, um, or actually as an order by the governor of the state of California, that you consult with Native American tribes. Now, I don't know how your process goes, but um, when you received an application, I would have thought that as a federally recognized tribe and the only federally recognized tribe within the Central Coast area, that we would receive notification that this is taking place. It wasn't until I received an email uh, from the National Park Service this past Monday that there was a hearing here today. Um, so that is the reason why I'm here today. And I'm asking that prior to any approval of this permit, that you notify all tribes, not just the federally recognized, but those that would have an issue with this uh, particular project that's going to actually would devastate our channel islands. So I ask you that you would not, not approve this permit and that you would look at um, notifying all tribes in order to consult with them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Leslie Catania here. Then Sudi Stahl and Howard Hall. 
morning. I want to bring to your attention once again that smart leaders do not belong in a school yard. I am referring in particular to a smart leader that's located on Hickory Street in the schoolyard of French American International School. Recently, I watched as a third grader stood directly under the smart meter. His head was in contact with the meter. I also saw children playing within inches of the smart meter. How can you allow a smart meter to be in close proximity to children? Smart meters are what the World Health Organization calls a possible carcinogen. I ask you to practice the precautionary principle. Let French American International School have the choice to opt out. Let all schools have the choice to opt out. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Judy Scholes and Howard Hall and Sandra Law. Good morning. KG Technology stated there is a neodymium magnet in the smart meter. According to the Chronicle, the strongest magnets are made from this rare earth metal. Two magnets one foot apart can attract each other with such force it can break your finger. The neodymium in the smart meter is powerful, especially when in close, close proximity to banks of smart meters. Much like insects, birds, and fish, we humans have an internal compass, also high in magnetite. Located in the brain, the pineal gland produces melatonin, the hormone that induces sleep. 49% of people sick from smart meters cannot sleep. Venture capitalist Al Gore knows a smart meter is not good for the environment nor its people. Yet he is on the advisory board and has invested $75 million in Silver Springs Network. On the one hand, he uses his clout as ex-VP to urge Congress to adopt energy policies. And on the other hand, he profiteers handsomely by investing millions in these policies, so-called green technology. The government granted $561 million in contracts to Silver Springs Network. Let's not be fooled by Al Gore's green scam and end up with a microwave, Silent Spring. And then on the side, too, I want to state that I had a conversation with Helen Burt at PG&E, and she stated that she believed there should be a no fee opt-out. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Howard Hall. And Sandra Ross and then uh, Flynn Kelly. Howard Hall. Thank you. My friends, families, and co-workers are very frightened. In 1906, a much smaller San Francisco suffered a 7.9 earthquake. The quake was bad, but 90% of the damage was caused by fires. Broken gas mains fueled fires that burned down 25,000 buildings in San Francisco. That's 450 square blocks, as you can see by the pictures. Far worse, 3,000 citizens died in that disaster. We're overdue for a major quake on both the San Andreas and Hayward Faults. It's frightening to consider what another quake, an earthquake we know is coming, frightening to consider how much damage it would do if it hit this afternoon. Task 12 of your gas safety plan allows PG&E until 2016 to put in automatic shutoff valves. Why can't these valves be in place by the end of this year? The quakes will come. Will California cities burn again, or will the PUC act? <laughs> Dr. Sandy Ross, Health and Habitat. In this 1,500-page, six-volume, 2012 Bioinitiative Report, plus the assessment of radio frequency microwave radiation emissions from smart meters, which I enter into public record, are many scientific reasons why electromagnetic fields and radio frequency radiation are detrimental to living organisms, especially us. At least two smart meter functions give people symptoms. Communication pulses occur, according to PG&E, up to 190,000 times a day. This is every half second. Pulses travel, so no one in the neighborhood is safe. 
The digitization process of switching mode power supply creates dirty electricity, high frequency transients. These spikes ride on electric lines and shoot out into our bodies. They circulate back to the transformer and go down line to neighbors so no one on the transformer is safe. We need no cost analogs and consider finding an honest engineer to make an effective internal filter for smart meters which would cut down on emissions somewhat. And please read all of this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for my 60 seconds. I better get to the point. Uh, thank you for my. I gotta go. Don't start yet. <laughs> Smart meters are a global deployment of the world grid. The CIA admits this is a 24 7, 365 surveillance in your home. Your utility companies are working on global mandates to install these things. Hundreds of thousands have already been deployed across the country already. This world grid agenda is being orchestrated through collaboration of the mega banks and corporations worldwide. The success of this mesh network that they are putting on your home is going to be determined by all of us. For them, it requires that we replace all of our old appliances with new smart grid technology appliances that happen to carry RFID chips inside. Uh, this this uh, ranges everything from your electric toothbrush down to your refrigerator and your stove. I'm not kidding. The, the RFID chips work hand in hand with your lovely smart meter. And uh, boy, if you guys think you're sick now, just wait until the radiation extends through the use of these chipped appliances. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate goal for this massive collection of data is to ration by turning off your appliances whenever they decide. And you have to, uh, whenever they decide your lot amount of energy is, is all used up. Um, we're talking through, they're going to be monitoring your gas, your water, even your waste. Uh, their end game for this grid network uh, will be to use carbon credits, allowances for you, carbon allowances to each of us that will designate the amount of energy consumption we can use. Uh, the, the grab for power has a foundation of urgency based upon the assumption of man-made global warming and the requirement to reduce CO2 emissions immediately. It's fear-mongering if you ask me. Um, it's called Agenda 21. Yeah. Read this book by Rosa Corey, Behind the Green Mask. You can get it on Amazon. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Toral Jelter, and I am a children's doctor practicing in Walnut Creek, California. I'm here today to advocate on behalf of America's children. I am here to request an immediate moratorium on smart meters on homes, schools, hospitals, and medical clinics. Before you make your final decisions, I ask that the CPUC read and understand the summary for the public in the original 2007 Bio Initiative Report and the recent 2012 update. I want to tell you a few quick stories from my practice. An 11-year-old girl develops digestive problems and no longer gains weight. This lasts for over a year. Then the smart meter is removed from her bedroom wall and her stomach aches decrease and she starts to gain weight again. A 4-year-old boy with sleep problems for two years seeks help. His parents decrease his total EMF exposure. He is able to sleep again. A 10-year-old boy with autism and inability to speak, he's never said a word before in his whole life, a decrease in his EMF exposure, he says his first full sentence within three days. Last year, the American Academy of Environmental Physicians asked the CPUC for an immediate moratorium on smart meters in homes and schools because of health concerns. The American Academy of Pediatrics, a nonprofit organization of over 60,000 pediatricians that advocate for children's health, has requested a reevaluation of EMF safety standards as children are known to be more vulnerable than adults. A nation that doesn't protect its children has no future. Please let us collaborate and do what is in our children's and our nation's best interest. Thank you very much. Smart meters or smart meters located within a few inches or feet of desks or beds profoundly change the particular exposure to RF radiation spikes from the wireless device and 
How can you in all good conscience allow pg and &E to penalize a family or individual uh, subjected to such arbitrary conditions, not under their control? Some people may experience no effects, but clearly a review of the thousands of complaints would suggest that these devices, especially um, in banks and at close proximity, are far from harmless. Both situations, in fact, are examples of violations of FCC specifications. No co-location and a 20 centimeter uh, clearance for all humans. Um, the FCC specifications for transmitters using the unlicensed band that smart meters used. Other states have ruled that the fees are excessively punitive. I urge you to suspend all opt-out fees. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Browner. Good morning, Commission, and uh, welcome, uh, Ms. Biederman. Thank you, Chairman, for being here today. I am here representing seven apartment buildings in the County of Marin. I am asking, I'm here in favor of health I'm in favor of privacy, and I'm in favor of safety. I'm asking for a free individual and community opt-out. We all know that even if we're not experiencing symptoms now, we're all being damaged by this microwave radiation. We need to roll back the smart meters that were ill-conceived and hastily installed now. Um, in the meantime, please give us a free individual community opt-out. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, that that uh, ends the number of speakers who signed up. Uh, just a minute, please. That ends the number of speakers who no, 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 signed no. up prior to the starting time. However, Commissioner Peavy, please read ALJ 252. Will you please shut up? I am oh. 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 Why don't you wait a minute before you get agitated? I'm going to allow anybody here who would like to address us who had not signed up to address us for a minute. And I also I'm suggest doing exactly you change you this slide so that it does not intimidate people sitting here who have not signed up. Go ahead. Identify yourself, please, and speak. Thank you. Sorry. This is the first time I was unaware of the procedure. And welcome, and welcome here. That's all right. We're accommodating to anybody who wishes to speak who didn't sign up. Yeah, but why didn't you sign up initially so we got riled up? Right. Well, well, why don't you sign up? Why do we only have one minute? Many of you know the process here. Now, go ahead, please. You're, 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 you're new. We welcome you. Please tell us what's on your mind. It is an exciting uh, mission. <laughs> My name is Adrian and I live in San Francisco and in a dense city there's a lot of um, things that we have to weigh the risk and benefits, whether it be walking down the street during high pollution time, cardiovascular disease, um, what I choose to buy at the store, I produce corn syrup or not. I want to be able to have the choice. I live in a dense area, which means that I don't even want to think about the hundreds of smart it actually makes me cry that I don't have this choice because even if I made the choice to opt out with the $15, what difference does it make? My reprieve is when I go far away to the ocean, I finally feel like I can breathe, my body can relax. It's important that you give people a chance to be able to find peace in their own home. Let them opt out. Let it be free. Do the right thing. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Hart. Good morning. My name is Joshua Hart. I'm the director of Stop Smart Meters. Our website, as well as our private email groups, are apparently very popular with PG&E executives and CPUC employees alike. <laughs> we spoke to you nearly three years ago about the problems with this technology. Pediatricians warn you about the health risks, especially the children. Electrical engineers warn you about fire risks of non-UL listed devices carrying electrical load for entire buildings. Civil liberties watchdogs warn of a new era of government and corporate snooping brought about by the smart meter. 
With the deployment nearing completion, health damage and behavioral problems caused by RF exposure to children are on the rise. Widespread fires, explosions, and electrical problems are being covered up. People are realizing that smart meters record the intimate details of our lives and that those entrusted with protecting this data are ethically challenged. After more than 500 members of the public attended public hearings around the state in December, all opposed to smart meters and the extortionate fees being levied to avoid them, the choice faced by this commission is clear. Listen to the voice of the people of 57 city and county governments, of the tens of thousands of people who have written, called, and emailed you, to doctors, scientists, teachers, and nurses. It is time to take responsibility for past mistakes of this commission, allow people to use a standard analog meter with no penalty or intimidation, allow businesses to do the same so we can keep the work workforce strong and healthy. If the lawfully elected representatives of an area do not wish smart meters in their community, respect that right. Respect the rights of electrosensitive individuals to live in safe areas away from meters where medically necessary. Carry out inquiries into the fire and health risks. Recall meter systems that are unsafe or hazardous to public health. In other words, deal with the demise of the smart meter program with dignity rather than denial. To salvage any shred of public respect for this commission, Mr. PV, you must step down. My name is Drew Lewis, I'm from Santa Cruz. I'd like to draw your attention to a recent uh, finding uh, regarding uh, breast cancer in cell phones that was uh, uh, on uh, uh, KPFA radio on January 22nd. Uh, they had an interview with a Dr. John Hart, who is a very experienced, uh, prominent uh, breast surgeon on cancer. And they found that uh, young women are, there's now a spike occurring with young women uh, developing breast cancer who uh, put cell phones between their breasts when they were teenagers. And so this is the same technology, this is the same energy form that we're seeing used. It's also been uh, weaponized in the US military. Um, I think that we really need to stop this smart meter deployment and look at the overwhelming evidence that uh, this is causing terrible harm to our population. And I think to continue to, to uh, deploy this, this obviously uh, documented dangerous media that's causing uh, sickness and death, um, it's uh, a very uh, strong evidence of criminal and psychotic behavior, psychopathic behavior in the agencies involved. And I think we should purge the agency of these criminals and these psychopaths before we have any more damage to our population. Thank you. Marilyn Garrett, there's an article by Healthy Fairy called Why Our World is Electropolluted. And it starts out that the military invents and uses something you can be sure it's effective and lethal. And industrial capitalists have a way of repackaging these gizmos to appear beneficial, but their lethal properties remain. Wireless devices like PG&E's microwave meters are a symptom of toxic corporate capitalism. The radiation weaponry industry, including San Onofre, nuclear power, of which and smart meters are an integral part, is destroying nature, the web of life, the birds and bees. Microwave radiation. Uh, weaponry expert Barry Power, Barry Trower, T R O W E R, expresses the facts. One fact is that when he was worked for the British Secret Service, they found that with 30 different pulse modulations of microwaves, they could affect about 50 different aberrations in physical and mental well being, in functioning, body entrainment. We want to opt out of PG&E. We want to uh, have these recalled, like you recall dangerous drugs, you recall the whole program. We want public, locally owned ownership of utilities to replace PG&E, and we need criminal investigation and pursuit.
succeeding and PG and E and their cohorts. Thank you. My name is Kayo, and I came naively before the board uh, last time after PG&E had said they would replace the non-existent meters that had exploded and burned down my garage and caused damage to my house <laughs> with analog meters. But while I was up there talking to the CPC, they put in smart meters. Oh, wow. Then they wow. called up the next day and apologized for trespassing and said they would give me the analog meters, but I'd have to pay the opt-out. Then they called and said they would give me um, some money. I did not quite agree to this, but they're now giving me a credit for the smart meter uh, surcharge that they're charging that I didn't, uh, that they'd already agreed they would charge me. You know, Edison admitted that it's okay to make a lot of mistakes on the way to a good solution. The PUC, CUPC, and um, PG&E can do the same. It's okay. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? If not, that concludes the public comment portion of our meeting. Sick from smart meters. Thank Sick from smart meters. meters. Sick from smart meters. We now turn to our consent agenda. You spy, you lie, you make us sick. 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 Oh my God, you make us sick. Enough.